ओके सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग व्हाट इज सिस्टोलिक प्रेशर वेरिएशन एंड व्हाट इज पल्स प्रेशर वेरिएशन इन शॉर्ट दे आर कॉल्ड इज एस पी वी एंड पी पी वी बेसिकली एनी पेशेंट इन द आई सी यू इज देयर वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन और वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंट क्वेश्चन विच नीड्स टू बी एड्रेस इज वेदर दिस पेशेंट इज फ्लूड रिस्पॉन्सिव और फ्लूड एंड रिस्पॉन्सिव वेदर वी नीड टू गिव मोर फ्लूड्स टू दिस पेशेंट और नॉट देर आर मेनी वेज टू डिटर्मिन no one is accurate but there are different methods by which we analyze or we interpret that okay we may need to give uh, fluid to this patient or we don't need to give fluid to this patient in those parameters these two systolic pressure variation and pulse pressure variation also plays an important role why we are discussing these two today because they are pretty easy to calculate or pretty easy to interpret from the data which is going on your monitor so what we'll do today we'll first see a little theory about systolic pressure variation and pulse pressure variation and then uh, we see a few limitation and again then we'll go to the live recording which we have recorded in our in our icu by which you can understand how we can apply in the live scenario so let's see so these are the two graphs in which you have an arterial trace where the pressure is varying this is the systolic uh, peak and this is the diastolic peak before discussing these two uh, arterial graphs you need to understand why there is a pressure variation when there is patient is fluid deficit when you ventilate the patient or when there is a patient is hypovolemic whenever you ventilate the patient there is a positive pressure inter develops in intrathoracic uh, cage and which hampers the return of uh fluid from the abdomen and other parts of the body therefore the blood pressure falls and when there is expiration the intrathoracic pressure releases and there is a gush of uh, fluid from the body compartment so if the patient is hypovolemic the vessels will get compressed and they will be more sensitive to the pressure variation if they are filled then they will not be get too much compressed and they will not be too sensitive to the uh, pressures in the intrathoracic cage so whenever there is a hypovolemia patients uh, this pulse pressure will vary a lot this arterial trace will uh, vary a lot now we see the graphs now these are the two graphs now you can see here this is the highest uh, peak of systole and this is the diastole now the highest systolic pressure this is the highest systolic pressure and out of all these four this is the lowest systolic pressure so how systolic pressure variation is calculated systolic blood pressure maximum minus systolic blood pressure minimum so suppose this pressure here is somewhere around 100 or 110 or 120 and the pressure here is around uh, 190 or 90 for arbitrary value we will calculate it it is 100 and it is 80 here so the spp will be 20 so it will it is you know, uh, written in 20 mm hg so this is the 20 mm hg is the variation in systolic pressure now how you calculate the pulse pressure variation pulse pressure means the difference between in a cycle the highest systole and the diastole so you see here it is not important uh, to calculate the pulse pressure from the highest systole uh, pressure but the difference between the systolic and the diastolic pressure where it is means where is the pulse pressure is high now you see here the pulse pressure uh, systolic uh, pressure is this and diastolic pressure is this why we have not calculated from here because the systolic pressure is here and diastole is here the variation is not so much so this will be the pulse pressure highest and this will be the lowest lowest pulse pressure so suppose your systolic blood pressure is 100 diastole is 60 so maximum uh, pulse pressure will be 40 difference and suppose this is 80 and this is 60 so your lowest pulse pressure will be 20 how it is being calculated difference between maximum and minimum divided by the uh, uh, half of when we add these two this is the formula p max minus pp minimum divided by pp max plus p minimum divided by 2 into 100 don't worry about this formula we'll calculate in the uh, in the real uh, video which we have recorded now how much variation how much figure is there in which we will say that this patient is fluid responsive so usually many trials many study have told that it they vary between 9% to 15% 9 to 15 mmhg so 
usually you can take it if there is the value is coming somewhere around 10 to 15 percent or 10 to 15 mm hg of difference between highest systolic and uh, lowest systolic then the patient uh, may be fluid responsive one very more important point is if your patient is fluid responsive doesn't mean you need to give fluid it depends on the clinical scenario we are naturally are slightly hypovolemic so by nature we are slightly hypovolemic that that's why we get thirsty time to time so if your patient is fluid responsive it doesn't mean you need to give fluid now what is the limitations of this you need to understand the patient should be fully mechanically ventilated on patient who is a spontaneous board or patient who is constantly breathing not on ventilator these parameters are not indicated you cannot use them but i'll tell you in your routine uh, ICUs or for practical purposes even if you take help of these parameters in a uh, in a conscious patient spontaneous breathing patient though they will not give an accurate value but they can give you fair idea if they will help you in evaluating whether you can give fluid or not you can see the trend very very important there should not be any arrhythmia if you are suppose a patient is in if atrial fibrillation then obviously the graph will vary so patient should not have any arrhythmia svt sort of things now high tidal volumes and low tidal volumes if there is a high tidal volume the variation will be huge if there is a low tidal volume your variation will be uh, low so if in high tidal volume we can get false positive result that you feel that patient is fluid responsive but actually it is not and if it is low tidal volume the variation will not be so much so you will feel oh the patient is filled with fluid actually the patient may be requiring fluid now peep high peep same high peep means their variation will be more so you need to consider that very important if the if the patient is uh, having open abdominal surgery so what happen you ventilate and that pressure is dissipated in the abdomen so the variation will reduce by 40 to 50 percent so even if the patient is fluid responsive the variation will not be so much now some other points changes in the lung compliance or resistant ARDS or ILD or these sort of things can alter a little bit but the most important is on a patient should be ventilated sedated paralyzed there should be no arrhythmia and tidal volume and peep should be a, in a fairly normal range now we'll see in the our recording which we have done in the icu so this is the patient you can see the heart rate is 115 and i'll play this you see the uh, arterial trace the above one is 95 and the below one is 55 you just see uh, sorry it's we recorded so it's so this is 95 touch the highest and we lowest low okay. lowest is somewhere here so first we'll calculate the spv so systolic pressure variation somewhere around 95 this is the highest and this line is around 75 and it is little blue so we can take it 75 so how much is the difference 95 minus 75 20 it is more than 10 to 15 so this patient can be fluid responsive other clues are patient is a little bit hypotensive patient is tachycardic so we can give fluid to this patient now how we'll calculate the pulse pressure variation so let's see uh, pulse pressure varies where you can see the highest difference between systole and diastole i think this is the one 95 minus 75 in bit this is 75 55 somewhere it is 65 so 95 minus 65 is 30 this is the highest pulse pressure and the lowest 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 i think this is the lowest difference this is 75 minus somewhere 50 so uh, 65 minus 50 uh, it's 15 so highest was uh, th uh, 30 difference 95 minus uh, 65 and low low pulse pressure is 65 minus 50 so how we'll calculate i'll write down the formula here uh, it will appear on the screen so 30 minus 15 divided by 30 plus 15 divide by 2 into 100 if it is come more than uh, 10 to 15 percent then your patient is um, fluid responsive let me calculate so you can see in the formula here you can see is 30 minus 15 
divided by 30 plus 15 divided by 2 into 100 it comes somewhere around 66 so patient is highly fluid responsive more than 10 to 15 percent so that way you calculate now other clues are again tachycardic patient hypertensive patient and we gave the patient a fluid challenge and i will show you what the result was you just see now you see the heart rate has decreased the pulse pressure variation has gone uh, down now you can come on, don't see it's too much different between systole and diastole some uh, are cutting because uh, the scale is not set properly but hypotension is reduced tachycardia is reduced the variation is reduced so this worked and our patient responded to fluids one small tip which i read in up to date that pulse oximeter the plethysmograph that also at times can give you a clue whether patient is fluid responsive there is too much variation in the plethysmograph uh, during respiration you can have uh, some idea that this patient may respond to fluid not uh, recommended but in up to date it was written that uh, this can be used or used at some centers so this was all for today if you have any doubt you can ask in the comments or preferably on icu.in forums see you in the next video